the crack of the bat, the whoosh of the swing, warmth of summer, golden twilight. My favorite team never gives up the fight. It's a fun tradition, it's more than a fling to catch a rising star and to win a ring. What is up, chat, and welcome back to another edition of the International E-League on MLB The Show 20. As always, I'm TQ. I'll be on the 6th, something a little bit different on this Tuesday, though, as we have some of the broadcasters helping out in other ways with the front office. It's going to be just me, just like our normal Thursday broadcasts, uh, or Thursday streams, I should say. It's just going to be me on this one, so before we get started, let's take a look at our Yingling starting lineups. For the visiting Paw Sox today, we will be on the road against the Charlotte Knights. Suwei Lin leading off, CJ Chatham, Bobby Dahlbeck, two-time reigning Paw Sox season MVP, Ruznay Castillo hitting fourth, Josh Ockamy, who has been an absolute monster in this International E League, hitting fifth, Witty Hernandez and Longy round out the lineup. Oops, sorry, with Centeno catching, hitting ninth, and left-handed pitcher Kyle Hart on the mound. Hart faced Charlotte in real life once last year. He ended up going five innings, allowing six earned runs on five hits. He walked three, struck out two, and let up two home runs. So he did struggle a little bit against the Knights last year in person. And for the home Charlotte Knights, you see Nick Madrigal. A lot of hype around that second baseman in the Chicago White Sox organization. He'll be leading it off, followed by Joel Booker, A.J. Reed at first. There are four, five, six hitters, Daniel Palka, Blake Rutherford, Nicky Delmonico, just a fantastic baseball name, Chesler, Cuthbert, Daniel Gonzalez, and the shortstop, Laz Rivera, rounding out the lineup there. For the Knights, another left-hander on the mound, Carlos Rodone. Now, Carlos Rodone spent his time in 2019 entirely with the Chicago White Sox before he was transferred uh, to the injured list with some left elbow inflammation. If you're a baseball fan, you know that throwing elbow inflammation might mean a bad thing, and unfortunately for Rodone, it did as he ended his season with just 34 and two-thirds innings pitched before going out for Tommy John surgery, which is why he is down here in the minors for this matchup. Now we're going to go back to seeing my face as we get this game underway and load it up. But chat, what's up? How are we doing? Let's hear it. Matty Ice, no special guest stars during the stream lined up at least that I know of. We're going to have a, a real chill stream today. Uh, I was thinking might even play some tunes in the background. Who knows? But we should have we should have a pretty chill one lined up. All right, let's get into this. You see the records there for the teams last year. 75 and 64 for Charlotte. We're playing at Capitol Field. We know that uh, minor league fields are not in MLB The Show 20, so we make do with what we got. Capitol Field with a Capitol building in the background is just a gorgeous one, and Charlotte has one of the most beautiful fields in all of minor league baseball definitely in the international league as you see the numbers there for road dome suey lin leading it off and guys i will say i have not been practicing 
on this hitting view today. So we'll see how it goes. What an eye. Also, as usual, you see some of our uh, corporate partners that we're so thankful for right up above me. That'll be a scroll throughout the entire stream, but let's have some fun. Lead off knock. Can we get two out of it? We're pushing it. Sue out of babe. Maddie, tonight I'm just playing against AI. Just playing against AI tonight. On uh, Thursday nights, usually we do the head to head matchup, and that's with the big league teams. I don't know why those trophies are popping up, to be honest. And I believe Charlotte is actually playing right now, or they're about to go live as well. Uh, on the minute, actually, they said they were going live at 7.04 first pitch. So if you want to bring their stream up in a different tab, they are twitch.tv slash Charlotte Knights Baseball. And they actually have a fun promotion tonight. It's Bark in the Ballpark for Charlotte. So normally a lot of minor league teams have a bark in the park night that I know we've had in Pawtucket the last couple of years. But obviously, with no games going on, we make do with what we got, as I said earlier. So for the Charlotte stream, they're going to be showing adoptable dogs featured every inning. They're going to have a live interview with a representative from uh, their local Animal Rescue League. So some pretty cool things going on over on the Charlotte stream if you guys want to bring that up in another tab don't you dare get rid of me oh that's gone that has to be gone off the top of the wall for Bobby Dahlbeck one of the deepest parts of the park hit it about 400 feet just under the yellow for a wall ball double here at Capitol Field puts the Paw Sox up one nothing early you love to see it Ooh, I thought that was going to be a little bit more inside. Bruzne Castillo stepping in. Also, unfortunately, since we don't have the broadcasters today, I don't really, I don't have the stats. I forgot to ask them for their stats, so I don't know exactly how well some guys like Josh Ockamy or Bruzne Castillo, who goes the other way for an RBI single to put us up 2-0, I don't know exactly how they've been doing in this international E-League, because generally I'm just pushing the buttons. You see that nice oppo stroke again. I don't know why, but I feel like I kind of have to do a little bit more of a, of a broadcast style today. Bit at that change up outside. Akami in real life has some of the best plate discipline I've seen at the minor league level. You rarely get him chasing and stuff, especially low and away. And you usually get him looking for something like that a slider that hangs a little bit and he drives it into the right center gap for a double that also scores a run. And Chad, I, I assume you don't want to see me just beat up on the CPU all day. So I'll try to make it as I'll try to make it quick and painless. But I like getting a nice lead early. Because Kyle Hart in this game is listed as a relief pitcher for some reason. Although he was a starter in Pawtucket last year. And a starter in Portland before he got called up. So we'll see how far he can go into this game with limited stamina, I'll say, that they give to relievers. Witty a 
ahead in the count 2-1 on Rodone, who's struggling. Just 15 pitches, but already three runs allowed. Ooh. Jammed in the broken bat. Foul. Evens the count at two. Oh, but he's not going to jam me with that one. Went back, doubled up on the fastball. Up and in, and Witty mashes that. 406. 101 exit velo. Absolutely crushed by Witty. He had one of those home runs late in the year last year that baffled me a little bit sitting up in the press box because he's normally a gap-to-gap -gap guy and he has that right center field sort of power alley, just a natural opposite field swing. But when the guy turns on one, boy, does he turn on one. So much like Witty in real life, Jansen Witty crushes an inside fastball. I'm struggling to get out now. Just swinging at everything. And guys, if you haven't already, you can hit that follow button, the heart-shaped button up at the top of the stream. What's up, Taylor? How you doing? And uh, after 10 minutes that you're following the channel, you can participate in the chat. Taylor, I don't mean to call you out, but did you miss uh, last Thursday? I'm hoping I didn't just miss what you were saying in the chat. Because then that would, that would just be me not doing my job. Nice play over at third there. Hernandez moves up to second there, two down. Oh, and we chase him in the first. Well, congratulations. That's that's quite a good reason to miss Taylor graduating college. Well deserved. Who we got? Alberto Mejia. Juan Centeno coming up for the pitch mix. He has a four-seamer, two-seamer slider and change up. Gets Centeno to roll over on the slider. Out number three. As once again, I think for the third week in a row against a computer in these games. The Paw Sox bat around in the first. Here comes Kyle Hart. The tall lefty, who had a phenomenal year in Pawtucket last year. Nick Madrigal leading it off. Ooh, and leading it off with a bunt attempt? I think they called that foul, but that looked like it had chalk. I mean, I'll take it. Quickly down 0 2. Fingers slipped off the joystick there. Taylor, how did the graduation go? Was it a was it a Zoom graduation? Was it a pre-recorded? What just happened there? Was it a pre-recorded message kind of thing? has Joel Booker quickly down 0-2. Let's see if we, he can put him away this time. Centeno calling for a pitch in. They go with a two-seamer away, and it's flared into right center field. Lynn under it. The runner, Madrigal, tagging. Throw over to third. Too late. Piquitty, that was rough. You don't see that from Rusne in the outfield. 
Let's see if we can get AJ Reed the three hitter. Let's see if we can strand Madrigal over at third. Hart getting guys down 0 2 real quick. Try to sweep this curve across the zone and we get him swinging. Chasing a well placed curveball low and away for Hart's first strikeout and out number two. Oh, Taylor, that's great. Just get to hang out with the family. Celebrate an accomplishment that, like that. That's awesome. Hart gets another strikeout. Three pitches. Chasing a low and away curve again. And we strand Madrigal at third base. That's what I'm talking about. End to one. Paw socks up. Five zip. And Lynn, just like he started the first inning with a base hit up the middle. And Chatham follows suit on the first pitch. I'm also saying no replays today. I know when we usually have Josh, Jim, and Mike on, replays give them some time to sort of go through everything. Oh, God. Okay, they're just going to let me run back to first. That was kind of them. Have a quick mound visit before Ruzne with the base's juice. Smacked over to right. That'll drive a run in. Six nothing. Chat, you know I like sending a message in this first game of the International E-League series that we've been playing. I like putting up a big number in that Excel sheet. In the standings, we're currently in second place in our division behind only Syracuse who I lost to Mets catcher Rene Rivera in week one of this International E League. The Charlotte Knights are in fourth place at five and seven. We're seven and five. Charlotte's in fourth at five and seven. So we gotta have a series win this week and an interesting wrinkle. Right now we are tied with the Louisville Bats in second place we own that tiebreaker since we won that series louisville plays syracuse so if louisville beats syracuse and we win our head-to-head -head matchup on thursday we might have a three-way tie for first place heading into what might be the playoffs what might just be a championship game we're not sure but there might be a three-way tie for first place where syracuse beat us we beat Louisville and Louisville beat Syracuse. So some interesting things going on towards the end of the regularly scheduled season. We might get an extension, but who knows. Hart not messing around today. We don't have time for that. Cutter gets in on the hands. Flared foul and Dahlbeck makes the running catch for out number one. Bringing up Nikki Delmonico. 
Nikki Delmonico sounds like sounds like a backyard baseball sort of name. Was there a Delmonico in backyard baseball? Nope, that's down. Ooh, couldn't get him chasing the curveball. See if we can get one in on the hands. Yep. This one popped over to second. Marco Hernandez under it for out number two. Caught a lot of the plate with that cutter. This one flown out to left. Longy settles under it. And a quick 1-2-3 inning for Kyle Hart. Just now. Fouled off to the left side again. On the changeup outside, a little bit late. Marco checks his swing one and two. Did to Madrigal on the first for the first out of the third inning. Now back left fielder Nick Longy. Longy sneaky, another one of those guys who looks nothing in this game like he does in real life. Longy's got the flow going. Oh, there was a Del Vecchio. That's right. I was thinking Del Vecchio, not Del Monaco. That was the guy who wore the headphones, right? Catches the black for strike two. Madrigal busy this inning as he makes the third out. Hossocks go down one, two, three that time as we head to the bottom of the third. Leading seven nothing. Leading up for the night. The catcher, Daniel Gonzalez. Way early on the changeup is Gonzalez. See if we might tie him up with this sweeping curve. Just gets a piece to stay alive. Oh, it was Angela. I thought they were brother and sister, right? Was that the Del Vecchios that were brother and sister? Jammed by a cutter inside. Longy again comes on to make the catch. That's what it was. Tony. Tony Del Vecchio. We got a foul pop to Akami. We're jamming a lot of guys. Now back. 
Madrigal. Back to the top of the order here with Madrigal. Let's see if we can land a little backdoor curve. Not where I wanted it, but it gets the job done anyway. Let's see if we can go. Ah. Uh, can't double up on it. What is going on with my outfielding today? Shoot him, Rusne. Nice slide, Charlotte's on the board. All right, we gave up one, but still a healthy, healthy lead. Leading off for Paul Tucker, the center fielder. Two-way Two leading off the fourth here. This one in the air to center and easy out. Let's see, checking on the Knights. Looks like there was no score in the third inning. CJ out of fave. That one was real low. He's able to golf it into right center all the way to the wall for a double. Now that is the third baseman, Bobby Jolbeck. I think we've seen enough replays over the last couple of weeks of me smacking the ball against the computer. That one over the right fielder's head poorly played we're gonna try to test it and the cutoff man holds on to the throw now Number 38. we got that one back chat some shaky outfielding anytime nick madrigal is up at the plate for the knights but we get that one back That was a juicy fastball that was way early on. Round it to short. Bad throw. Okay. The game gives Charlotte a couple base runners. Just gave us one right there. He smokes that one. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try to advance everybody. Why not? We already have nine. Brings in Alex McCray. Now pitching for the night. Number sixty-four. Alex McCray. Poor base running the play earlier. Great base running there. As we're in double digits, 14 hits, 10 runs already in this one. Now that one pulled down the line by Marco. And it looks like they'll trade places an RBI double. I bet the league commissioner at this point is really thinking... Boy, we should have we we should have had them play on a harder difficulty. I think that one's. Oh no. Warning track power. Leading off for the night, the left fielder, Daniel. 
Quickly up 0-2. Heard this before. Strikes him out with the change up in the zone, low and away. Hart is getting a little tired. Inside black with the fastball. Ooh, paint. <coughs> Excuse me, chat. Oh, allergy season. I'll try to mute my mic next time. That was gross. Thank you, Taylor. All right. I think we have to go curve low and away. It's like the only thing we haven't done here. Still gets a piece. Maybe get him to chase a fastball a little up in the zone. Yep. And yeah, just to give you an update on what's going on in Charlotte's game of this series. Top of the fourth. It is 0 0. Still a tie ball game. So I don't I don't think it'll happen, but it would be it would be quite the story if the virtual Paw Sox could beat the representative from the Charlotte Knights in their game. Cause then we could potentially we could potentially win Thursday and win our division, which would be unreal. Juan grounds it to Madrigal. I'm grounding out to second a lot today. And again, guys, just a reminder, if you're not following the channel already, hit that heart button up above the video player on Twitch. It's completely free. You'll be able to hang out in the chat just like Taylor and Moose Koenig checking in. What's up, Moose? Grounded to first. Easy backhand and a quick two outs here in the top of the fifth. Up 10. Not worried about quick outs. I'm going to keep it real with you. Not worried about the quick outs at all. As Chatham tries to go shopping in that right center gap again. Cut off nicely and he'll be held to single. Oh, and Charlotte's just yucking the ball around the yard right now. I'm actually watching Charlotte's stream. Uh, Charlotte right now is playing the second game of this three-game series of this International E-League. First two games are going on simultaneously. So we're playing the CPU Charlotte Knights, have a healthy lead on them. Charlotte is playing the CPU Paw Sox. And they're having their bark in the park night I mentioned earlier, but they are doing I'm watching their stream for the first time ever again Do not leave this stream Don't do it. I'll be upset, but They do have some cool stuff some cool stuff going on over in their stream Showing off some Some dogs that folks in the Charlotte area can rescue They're in the bottom of the fourth, scoreless. Hart, meanwhile, gets a chopper. Dahlbeck cuts it off nicely. Over to Akami for out number one in the fifth. Hart running out of energy. We talked about that at the top of the broadcast, too. Kyle Hart, although he was a starter in Portland to begin last year and a starter in Pawtucket once he got called up, 
Listed as a relief pitcher. Ooh, paint with a fastball inside. You get him looking. Seventh strikeout with two away here in the fifth. Sense Hart is listed as a reliever. You can see that energy right below four seam fastball at the bottom of your screen. Getting low. Getting quite low. Taylor, I'm wondering where the action in the chat is, too. Suwe on the shallow pop to center. Ends the fifth inning. Hart's going to go out there for six. I'm letting everyone know right now a little insider baseball. Hart's going out there. I'm not warming anyone up. The sixth is his. Ruzne up the middle. Going up the middle a lot, which makes me feel a lot better about my about my timing in this game. I know usually Tuesdays the broadcasters are always saying, I'm swinging at the first pitch. I'm not giving them enough time to, to set any scenes, to tell any stories, you know. And then I'm going the other way all the time. But here's the deal. I'm getting results. Now I'm finally shooting middle up at the plate. As I just fly out to right field twice. All right. Marco, two for three on the day. 17 hits pretty quick in this one, too. That one was way inside, and he still hits it down the line and right. That's going to be trouble. Collected in foul territory. Second and third now with two outs. Now that left fielder, Nick Longy. Grounded over to Madrigal. The runner's stranded. It stays 11-1 Pawsox heading into the sixth. Which might be Kyle Hart's final inning, unless it's a quick one. I mean, he's still got it, though. He doesn't have great velo. 89. Get there, Chatham. Oh, that's just... Pretty. That's just pretty. Making the play up the middle, off balance throw over to first. And yeah, this is this is Hart's this is Hart's last inning. As you can see, the double exclamation points right under four seam fastball. That's the energy meter telling us that his tank is out of gas. Chatham again. This time on a line for the second out. Quickly up 0 2. Been the story of the day. Swing. Well, Hart goes six. warm someone up while I warm someone up I do want to remind you guys I hate doing it but we do have a button at the bottom of the screen that allows you to donate to local uh, COVID-19 uh, response efforts I guess would be a way I could say it I don't know I didn't give myself a very good lead-in for that relief efforts is what I meant so if you click that button, it'll bring you to a link. Links with your PayPal. You'll be able to donate whatever you want. 100% of the donations will go to local COVID relief efforts. Again, I say it every time I'm on. 
do not donate unless you do have the means. Oh, that one's smoked by Centeno. Yeah, get out, ball. Down and in a sweet spot for a lefty. Just drop the barrel on it. That thing got out in a hurry. 12-1. Suwe's just been middle of the field all day. Let off the game with a double. Let off the second inning with a single up the middle. And you see another single up the middle here. All gas, no brakes is right, Moose. Always. Oh, late on the fastball there. Chad, I will say one of the things that's kept me sane throughout this uh, this quarantine is playing this game, and I find myself... Let's push it. Let's push it. I find myself talking at the game as if I were in an actual dugout. Send him. And send the pitcher. Caleb Farrar coming in. That is an ugly ERA. Although it's only through two and a th or two and two thirds. He did have a zero batting average against lefties, so I'm not familiar with Caleb Frere. But he might be a lefty specialist. Which, if you don't know because you haven't watched baseball this year, which none of us have. The lefty specialist is a dying breed with Major League Baseball's, uh, one of their pace of play initiative this year. Is that all relief pitchers must face at least three batters or the end of an inning, whichever comes first. As Ruzne drives an RBI single on the ground up the middle. But as I was saying, new in Major League Baseball this year, any relief pitcher faces a minimum, any pitcher, period, other than injury, obviously, faces a minimum of three batters. Doesn't matter, righty, lefty. Wow, I really chased that. Grabbed to a double play with Offany. That was way outside. I'm waiting on a score update for Charlotte. It looks like, oh my. It looks like Charlotte's up three nothing in the bottom of the fifth right now. With a runner on third, they're now up four nothing. I shouldn't have mentioned it was tied through three. Actually, let's see if Hart can go seven. I'd love, I'd love to have Hart go seven. I know I said last inning was his last but he's gonna go at least six and a third I'll tell you that much Taylor do I like the three batter minimum also thoughts on the universal DH that is a very good question to go hand in hand six and two-thirds for heart so it's it's interesting because I do like the three batter rule because I think it's different in the postseason, right? When, a, say, a team has a righty, lefty, righty do up in the order for them. Lead-off guy gets on. You bring a left-handed pitcher in to face a lefty, get him out, and then you bring a righty in to face whoever's next in the order, right? And that just takes a lot of time. I understand what they're getting at with the pace of play initiative. And one of the things I like about the three batter minimum is at that point 
you can't really just be a lefty with a weird arm angle that it's it's tough for left-handed hitters to pick up you know if you're coming all the way from sort of behind a lefty's body a left-handed hitter is going to struggle picking up on that when a righty is going to see it coming through almost like from first base all the way in so i do like that it, it's challenging some left-handed uh pitchers to get a little more accurate uh to have more consistent nasty stuff um and just be less of like this one niche specialist and it's an interesting point that you in the same sentence or in the same chat also ask my thoughts on the universal dh because that is like national league fans number one argument against a universal dh is that it's a specialist all they do is hit right which is all lefty specialists do is face one lefty in an inning for me the time it takes for those mound visits pitching changes um it's that's just that's just not worth it it's just dead air kind of takes the wind out of the sails of a game my argument for like national league fans is i mean we're red sox fans so we've been sort of spoiled with our designated hitters but would you rather watch kyle hart get an ab no offense to kyle i'm sure he can get a hold of one just like the rest of them or would you rather watch david ortiz you'd rather watch david ortiz and i think a universal designated hitter just affects the game in a in a more positive way because it makes it more competitive period yeah there's there's all the strategy that comes with bunting double switching small ball in the national league but at the end of the day in the national league national league pitchers are always going to have better eras because they are only facing eight real hitters most of the time and that eighth guy in the order you can pitch around because you know you have a pitcher who's not practicing hitting coming up next so i think it a DH just makes the game a lot more fun and makes batting orders more deep and exciting to watch um, when you're when your team is pitching it makes batting orders more intimidating keeps you on the edge of your seat where I know a lot of casual fans sort of check out when their team is in the field because they're not as invested in, in uh, whoever's at the plate or whoever's pitching or whatever it might be. But that's a very long-winded way of, of me telling you my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Agree? Disagree? Agree to disagree? What are we thinking, chat? What are your thoughts on the three batter minimum new this year and thoughts on the potential of a universal DH? base running up 16 chat going first to third drawing the throw taking second 27 hits here let's see if we can get 30 for my guy mike antonellis who was begging for 30 last tuesday well i think personally i was begging to to get on with the rest of my night but Oh, Dahlbeck again smokes one to left center. This one's gone. Smell you later. 429, almost 105 off the bat. Three-run bomb for Bobby Bombs.
left it belt high, and it got crushed. You guys remember, Dahlbeck missed a home run in that same exact spot in the first inning. Missed it by about two or three virtual feet. What's up, Isaac? Welcome back. And yeah, Taylor, exactly. It's it's sort of the same. It's two sides of the same coin. The the three batter minimum in the universal DH. Oh god, things are getting ugly for Charlotte. I didn't even realize I put up. Yikes! That's an inside the Parker for Roosnay. I didn't even realize I put up twenty one. We're not going to watch that. That was embarrassing. Your attention, please. Score horn. I might need to set up set up the horn. You can add different sounds. And, Chad, you've probably noticed since it's happened 21 times this game, it's probably gotten pretty annoying. I do have a little cash register sound uh, every time I score, which usually I turn off, but... Yeah, let's. Twenty one is 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 something. I'm trying to see if we can go deep with Ock here. I got two fastballs up, missed them both. But trying to stay on brand, I think I've hit a home run with Ockmi every Tuesday for the last three or four weeks. Oh, score him is what you were saying, P. Quiddy. Had to, had to send him. You're only, you're up 19, and you're not sending your guy for an inside the Parker. You gotta send him. Get through ball. Oh, what a stop by Madrigal. Doesn't do anything, but a great stop. Now we have Witty up, who homered earlier. There's 30 hits for Mike Antonellis. Uh-oh. Here comes. Oh, that time I was able to mute the mic and hide the hide the screen for that sneeze. You're welcome, chat. Oh man, that one took a lot out of me too. Now that the second base. We're going to have to check the box score to see not not even our Thought I thought I could do something cheeky there, but I don't even want to see our hitting numbers. I want to see their pitching lines because they're going to be some of the ugliest lines you'll ever see. Look at that, eight runs here in the eighth. Longy flies out to center to end to end the inning, but a lot of damage done. Also, what do you say, chat? Do we just try to throw a complete game with Hart? Even though he's just hanging right now, the left arm is just dragging behind him. I think we're going for it. Yeah, we're going for it. It feels good. Also, just get a load of the confidence in that bar. He might have absolutely negative energy, but he's unshakable right now. Oh, doesn't matter. Now 
We're getting beat up in Charlotte too, though. Charlotte's up nine nothing in in game two of the series. Paint. The man doesn't need energy. Mixing a Zyrtec is right. I need I need to get uh, some allergy meds. I was sheltered for so long with the stay-at-home order here in Mass. Now with things slowly starting to open up and just the weather getting nicer, doing a little more porch chilling. Great play up the middle by Marco. 22 to 1 here. Heading into the ninth, we have Centeno, Sue, and Chatham do up. The real question is, do we try to go for for 30 runs? 32 hits already done. I don't think Centeno got enough of that one, although he gave it a ride to right center. Suway four for six. Just a light day at the plate. Chatham five for six. Handful of singles and doubles. I don't think 30 is happening. No, under that one, that's going to be a fly out. Quick one, two, three inning for Charlotte in the top of the ninth. They're trailing 21. Let's see if they can do anything in the bottom half of the inning. Leading off for the ninth, the second baseman, Nick Madrigal. They almost chased that fastball that was about two feet inside. Oh, Kyle. Kyle, 10th strikeout. You dirty dog, you. We're just trying to get quick outs now. A complete game, 96 pitches for Kyle Hart. What a stud. And, of course, our viewer count the highest right at the end. Paw Sox win it 22-1. to one. Chatham and Dahlbeck are hyped. The outfielders with the Selly. We're not going to do the, the highlight reel. We did that last week when we scored like 14 runs. That was a mistake. It went on forever. But everyone with multiple hits, except Nick Longy, which is weird because I usually hit pretty well with Nick Longy, but he struggled today, only one for six. But look at that top of the order. Four hits, five hits, four, 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 three hits. Everyone scored at least two times except Hernandez and Longy. Everyone drove in at least two except Lynn at the top of the order and Longy who only had the one hit. Nine doubles. I don't you could probably see me doing the math in my head right there. Nine doubles. Four bombs. Not really from the usual sus suspects today either. Witty with a bomb early on, and Centeno with a line drive home run that went into the right field bullpen. A couple of double plays. That was a weird error for Sue Wei in the outfield, but it happens. 
we do sell those hats with the paw prints, P. Quitty. Over on pawsocks.com, there's a link to our shop. We do sell those hats with the paw prints on the brim. It's actually uh, some of the players' favorite hats to wear during BP. They love the way those things fit. Thanks, Moose. See you Thursday at 7 is next time. All right, let's see the Knights. Two hits for Madrigal, one hit for Booker, everyone else hitless. Ten strikeouts. They gave Madrigal a double. I forgot what play that was. I forgot. These games just become a blur after a while. Again, chat, Thursday at 7 will be the next time we're live. Um, if you haven't already, hit the follow button right at the top of the screen. Heart-shaped button. Completely free. Completely free. Uh, and you'll be able to talk in the chat. We come out with a big win. 22 runs on 32 hits. The one error from Lynn in center. Look at their pitching lines. Just disgusting. Two-thirds of an inning let up five earned. Three innings let up four earned. Was near your best performance. McCray, two and a third. Let up three earned. Just gross. Tough day for Hamilton with an infinite ERA on the day. But, chat, that's all That's all I got for you today. So I appreciate you tuning in as always. Uh, to give you an update in Charlotte, it's the bottom of the seventh inning. Charlotte leads 9 nothing. So it looks like, at best, we're going to have a share of first place if uh, Louisville is able to beat Syracuse in their series going on this week as well. So, again... Thanks for tuning in. We'll host that uh we'll host that Charlotte Knights game here in just a second, but thanks again. We'll see you Thursday.